Blake Lively is in this movie and she gets fucking decapitated. That's your spoiler warning, you've been warned. I really do try my best to manage expectations for content I'm excited for, whether that be movies, games, TV shows, whatever. I cannot remember a single time in my life where getting caught up in a hype wave didn't result in bitter disappointment because of an unrealistic bar I set for myself. Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> okay. Before we get into Deadman and Wolverine 3, let me give you a little history. There was a time when Deadpool was my favorite movie of all time. I was 14 years old, which I think is the perfect age to experience that movie. It was violent, it was sexy, it was cool, and my brain was so smooth and underdeveloped that I had basically zero critical thinking skills. I revisited it about 6 months ago and I think it's fine. The second one a little bit worse in my opinion. Now, that love I had for this character and that movie is important context before I say what I am unfortunately about to say. Deadpool and Wolverine is a fucking hot mess that gets more annoying the longer it goes on. This movie is essentially Ryan Reynolds jerking himself off for two hours while making eye contact with you and saying shit like, Wanna talk about what's haunting you or should we wait for a third act flashback? Uh, go fuck yourself. Or something to that effect. When I walked out of the theater, I felt pretty neutral about the whole experience, but the more I thought about the movie, the more it started to piss me off. When Ryan Reynolds said, Every Deadpool needs to stand out and stand apart and I have nothing yeah he wasn't joking this movie is directionless meandering and thoroughly underwhelming if you want anything out of the story and the funny thing is they had this figured out 10 years ago they knew how to make an irreverent action comedy that still told a coherent story and even an emotionally effective narrative or at least Tim Miller did. But never let it be said, I am not a fair and balanced reviewer. Let's start with the positives. This movie is absolutely gorgeous when it's actually trying. The new suit is fucking immaculate and same goes for Wolverines. The fight scenes have always been a highlight of the series and Deadpool 3 keeps that same energy with amazing choreography, expert camera work, and all the creatively disgusting gore you would expect. A highlight for me being Wade's TVA fight in the beginning of the movie where he's using pieces of Logan's skeleton as improvised weapons and he's really fucking laying into these guys with everything he's got. There's also a really strong one out towards the end of the film that is equally as fun. It had me grinning from ear to ear. Equally, the villain's powers have some really cool body horror visuals. She essentially has Professor X's powers except she physically reaches inside people's heads twisting her fingers through the skull. It's creepy as fuck but done really well and is a lot of fun to see. I like Cassandra Nova in general actually. Her motivations, although simplistic, made sense and she is clearly having a lot of fun with the power she holds over the wasteland and the people in it. She has a few funny lines as well like she is clearly taking the piss in this movie and it fits the tone well. Speaking of the jokes, this movie really didn't do it for me in the comedy department. Your mileage may vary on this, but personally, fourth wall breaks haven't been funny since 2016, and the only other offering this movie has is Discount South Park. The reason why this bothers me so much is because it is incredibly distracting. Almost every cool action piece or emotional scene is undercut by some dumbass comment about the audience or the state of the MCU. There is no faster way to take you right out of a moment than by doing something like this. Ready to die! People have waited decades for this fight. It is the laziest possible way to get a laugh because all you have to do is point out exactly what's going on in the scene. If this joke does it for you, you will like this movie. If not, then you're probably going to feel the same way I do. Is it too much to ask that Deadpool of all franchises will have matured over time? Probably. But replacing actual writers with Ryan Reynolds onset ad-libbing is pretty disappointing to me and the quality of the movie suffers as a result. Enough about Deadpool though, what about the plot? Wolverine's return is obviously the main draw of the movie, so how do they handle it? What happens in this story? Well, the start of the movie is actually pretty strong. Because of Old Man Logan's death, Deadpool's whole universe is going to be erased by the TVA, so in the most Deadpool fashion ever, he decides to kidnap Logan from another universe and replace him to save his. Naturally, the 
TVA aren't going to let this fly, so Deadpool and Wolverine immediately get banished to the wasteland where Fox properties go to die. And so does this movie because everything looks like shit from here on out, but well, let's not worry about that. It's from here that the film goes completely off the fucking rails. The plot just kind of happens as a vehicle for our heroes to collect more and more gratuitous cameos like their Pokemon cards. We move from scene to scene based on contrivance and the only character the movie sees that's worth exploring is Logan, but it fails to make us invested in this new version of him at all. Because we need a big third act climax, Cassandra Kane suddenly decides she wants to destroy the whole multiverse, and at this point I was just rolling my eyes. The ending feels like a kid mashing his toys together. Okay, so the evil lady who's the most powerful mutant ever is gonna destroy the whole multiverse. The evil lady summons like a whole army of evil Deadpools and uh, there's like a sexy Deadpool and there's like a dog Deadpool and Deadpool and Logan need to fight all of them at the same time. <laughs> I just, I just couldn't care less, eh? Paradox is an absolute highlight though, whenever he's on screen, genuinely goaded villain. The ending does highlight how pointless the story is in general though, we end up in the exact same spot we started. Deadpool goes home. Logan says he is definitely not coming back to more movies, definitely for real this time, and Deadpool doesn't end up in the MCU timeline. I'm just left thinking, okay, so what was the point? Logan learned to be slightly less of a dick, that's all we get. In terms of the overall MCU, we still have no clear direction, so if this was supposed to save the MCU, it doesn't serve that purpose at all. I give Deadpool and Wolverine a 5 out of 10, yeah that seems fair.